time, but one thing has stayed consistent. Celebrating 30 years on the air on WROI is the first federal program. Hosts may have changed, but the program is still the same. Now continuing a long-standing tradition, streaming on the first federal Facebook page and on WROI. It's time for the first federal program. Yes, indeed, it is time for the first federal program here on a Friday morning, a beautiful Friday morning, 39 degrees, yeah, a little bit of cloud cover, but you know what, it is a great Friday, we're joined by Todd Van Sickle. Good Thank morning. You. Thank you, Paul, good morning. Good morning to our listening audience, we have Tanner Lee with us today, and our special guest, Julie Schambarger from the Times Theater, she's always a great guest and fun to talk to, and there's a ton of things going on with the Times <laughs> Theater, and... We'll be talking about some of those with Julie going on. You mentioned cloudy, cloudy day. Yeah. It's starting off. I saw a little bit of the sun. This is eclipse weekend. So <laughs> yes. So what's the forecast, Paul, for Monday? Not what we want. Oh no. Yeah, we're looking at uh, some cloud cover, chance of showers. Oh okay. Yeah. How far would we have to drive to get out of that? And still be in the half of totality. Uh, pretty far. Okay. Yeah, looks like uh, most of Indiana will see some uh, cloudy skies on Monday. But the good thing is, um, I originally said mostly cloudy, cloudy skies. It looks like it's now saying mostly sunny. So it has changed since mm -hmm. last night. Well, it's a big weekend for the uh, some things going on in sports and the eclipse. Uh, should be a fun weekend. Uh, yes. Any special plans for the eclipse, assuming that you get some sun? Um standing out front looking at it and uh, the goal is to play uh, Black Hole Sun. Black Hole Sun, okay. That's great. Great tune to go with that. Yes. That's about the same length. Then. Or it's a little bit longer. Though. I think it might be a little bit yeah. longer than well, the you total pre, time frame. But. Pre, pre promote it. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, looking at the eclipse, there are, uh, well, maybe you shouldn't look at the eclipse. That's, a, that's the biggest warning. <laughs> well, if you have the eclipse, Glasses. Yeah, eclipse glasses. And I know the foundation has them, the library has them, mm -hmm. uh, most retailers have them. I was looking up some history or information about the eclipse last night, and there's a bunch of ancient myths about an eclipse. Uh, one is that from ancient Greeks saw it as a sign that the gods were angry at the king. A lot of other cultures uh, saw the disappearance of the sun as some type of entity or deity trying to swallow the sun. It's interesting though. There's also some modern superstitions too. Yeah. One of the modern superstitions, this seems crazy to me, but eclipses include the idea that pregnant women should not look at an eclipse. Mm. Or that food shouldn't be made during an eclipse. <laughs> or that it's unsafe to be outside. Mm. Well, I plan on being outside. Me too. Of course, the uh, most important thing to remember is if you're outside and the sun's out, you need to have glasses. Yes. Uh, or you can actually make uh, some viewing materials too. I kind of remember doing this as a kid a long time ago. Yeah. So you take a, boxes. take a, yeah, a cereal, cereal box or something boxes, like that yeah. and put a pinhole in it and look at kind of yeah. you know, project it on, on that or on the sidewalk. I even saw something that said you could use like a cracker and mm. use that to cast the the sun eclipse on the sidewalk or something like that hmm. for a colander. So, home cooking tips with Todd today. <laughs> <laughs> so the eclipse is happening this weekend. Hope everybody have, has a chance to enjoy it. Hope we have some sun. Yeah, yeah. I'm a. Uh, I'm most interested in uh, as you're talking about modern superstitions. Uh, one of them I saw was that uh, everybody needs to get uh, two weeks worth of food and water ready because. It, it will be a very bumpy two weeks after it, and food will be scarce. Yeah, I've seen some things like that, too. <laughs> Banking technology, like <coughs> crazy thoughts like there's going to be magnetic flares and computers yeah. are going to go down. Kind of reminds me of the hype around Y2K a little bit, but yes. that's not going to happen. So No. At least, at least I don't think so. I, I hope not. I can be proved wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, trivia today. No eclipse trivia. Okay. It's Final Four trivia, of course, oh. right? And uh, we have Canary to talk about that. I noticed that Giant FM played uh, Journey, Don't Stop Believing, right before 7 o'clock this morning. Uh -huh. 
and I was thinking, well, that's all the Purdue fans, they'll stop believing me. Yeah. Then I thought of This Is It, the great Kenny Loggins song that was, uh, that was, I don't know if you knew this, Tanner, or not, that was the original One Shining Moment song before One Shining Moment. I did not know that. Happened to be in 1981 when IU won the national championship. That's how I know that. They're on the season. <laughs> but the year, 81. Oh, 81. Okay. Yeah. okay. No. The, the year later, that's when Luther Vandross had the one shining moment. Okay. So hopefully you get to celebrate that this year. I hope so. I so hope the, so. So the trivia is which school has the most all time Final Four appearances? <laughs> okay. It's the usual suspects. UCLA, Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. UCLA, Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina. We'll let Julie play along too. She'll have mm -hmm. a good guess. So, mm -hmm. kind of introduce sports a little bit. Tanner, do you want yeah. to take it from here? Yeah, sure. Uh, first off, uh, high school basketball season is officially over. Yeah. As of last week, crowned four new state champions 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A. I want to give a congratulations to my fellow 2010 RHS gradu uh, graduate. Uh, Garrett Weininger for getting Fishers over the hump there over Ben Davis. So they are now 4A state champions. They only had one loss this year, so it was a pretty historic year for the Fishers Tigers. They won yeah. the sectional for the first time, regional, semi state, and then state. So and ben, ben Davis was a reigning champion, too. Yes, so they were. They yeah, off. yeah, knocked them off, and they were in the hardest sectional in the state. They had, I think there was four teams and so, ranked inside the top ten in their sectional alone, so. Very cool to follow them all year long, and congratulations to Garrett's. And I know he's going to just keep turning along his coaching career. It's getting better and better every year. So yeah, I'm excited to follow them next year. So what other sporting news is going on this year? Well, you mentioned the Final Four. Okay. Some trivia and uh, <laughs> yes, Purdue Boilermakers are back to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. So mm -hmm. a pretty big deal. For them, pretty big deal for the Big Ten. Lee Rose and played UCLA, right? Yes. And Marcus correct. Square Arena. Correct. They lost to UCLA and then the DI won the third place game. Well, that's right. Third they place game back games. there. Yeah. Back to right. them. Um, yes, Gene Caney in his 25 years at Purdue never got to a Final Four. He got two Elite Eights, but he was there live in Detroit Sunday to witness it. And he's out in Phoenix with the team for the Final Four this weekend. So um, it's pretty cool that they, they're still honoring him that way. And Zachy. Gave him part of the net that he cut down, gave him to Katie, so that was a pretty cool gesture. But uh, yeah, Purdue was uh, fortunate. Well, that was after I saw Zach Eady. He did not use the ladder. He, he did not, no. Up he just touched grabbed the rim with his hands. Yep. I'm like, must only, be nice. Only we could do that. <laughs> must be nice. Uh -huh. uh, but he had a career high performance against Tennessee with 40 points, 16 rebounds, and they needed it because Dalton Connect added 38 of his own for Tennessee. and it's a pretty good game up in Detroit, but uh, Purdue was finally able to get over that hump that they've been trying to do for many years. But hopefully the players don't think the job's done yet because there's still hopefully two games to go. Mm -hmm. They play NC State tomorrow, who's the Cinderella, I guess, still alive in the tournament, if you want to call them that. They're they're part of a big conference playing in the ACC, but they're 11 seed, and they have the worst record of any <coughs> team to make the Final Four yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Purdue plays NC State tomorrow. That game's at 6.09 is the tip-off on TBS and TNT. Um, and Purdue's a nine-and-a-half point favorite as of now. And then the second game, you have the defending champion UConn Huskies uh, face Alabama, who's making their first ever Final Four appearance. That game, tip as of right now, is at 8.49 mm -hmm. on TBS or TNT. Which means about 9.30. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not yeah, going to start on time. Yeah. Yeah. So and then the national championship game is on Monday. That's the... I, that's a late tip. I don't think it's nine something, I believe. So, yeah. And we don't get us started about that. Yeah, no. World they, series night games. Yep. Late games. Yep. Yeah, national championship they, they, game. They care about the ratings and uh -huh. they don't care about who's in attendance or anything like that. So, nope. uh, but it should be a, a fun weekend of basketball and hopefully. Hopefully I'm standing here next Friday talking about Purdue being the national champions. That would well, be you'll have your national championship shirt on. <laughs> well, I yeah, I ordered the final four ones and I because I, I I was lucky enough to be at the Elite Eight game in Detroit Sunday. Got to the store, well they ran out when I was in line. So then I got online and hurried up and ordered while I was late to that too and they're back ordered. So I still <laughs> don't have my final four t shirt or hat yet. I bet you could find one if you go to West Lafayette. I probably could. So what will happen in West Lafayette? If the dream comes true. That's a good. Well, like at IU, people go to the fountain and they yeah. go to Kirkwood and 
Well, the only thing I can compare it is stories I've heard in 1999 when the women's won the national championship. There was a few couches set on fire around okay. campus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know what they. I know they. A uh, the, the few couple thousands of people uh, celebrated the team when they got back to the airport the other night, but I don't know. That's good I know in Bloomington they do things like on Kirkwood Avenue they grease the light poles so people can't, can't, climb, can't up climb up them. them. Yeah. yeah. I think they tried that in Wrigleyville too in 2016, okay. but it didn't work. People well, still found a way. Best wishes to the world. Yes, yes. And then um, all your uh, guardians and MLB. Yeah. yeah. Look at the standings this morning. They're six and two. Yeah, off the good start. Cubs are four and two. Reds are four and two. Cardinals four and four. Tigers five and one. White Sox one and five. Yeah, and and I got to throw this to that Yankees six and one. Uh-huh. So, um, but most local teams are doing pretty good so far. It's early, but it's uh-huh. better to do good early than like the White Sox are doing. Right oh now, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the professor and I were talking yesterday. Uh, out the year that Detroit went uh, thirty-five and five to start the season, and then went about five hundred the rest of the yeah. season, but still won because yeah, because you got they had such a start. great lead yep. to start. Yep. So, so yeah, I will just win the games you can. Last yeah. thing in the sports, can't forget women's hoops. Yes, women's yeah. hoops. Yeah, UConn of South Carolina tonight at seven o'clock on ESPN. I'm sorry, North NC State in South yes. Carolina. At seven o'clock, the UConn in Iowa at nine o'clock. Yes, yeah. and, and tickets are for the women's final four on online. Most on most uh, ticket vendors are going higher. That's the Iowa had. Yes, Kaylin Clark and Iowa in fact, and then it's interesting. You got Connecticut and NC State both in the men's and women's final four, and in mm-hmm. South Carolina, women's undefeated. So a lot of storylines there. So yes, thank you for bringing that up, Todd. Yes, that starts tonight. Got some tidbits here this morning for you, Paul. On this day in 1973, the NFL adopted their jersey numbering system. Oh. For instance, quarterbacks could only wear numbers 1 through 19. Mm-hmm. That is still... They, they've changed the number system up a little bit, but that's <coughs> still on today as far as quarterbacks are concerned. On this day in 1997, Steve Irwin's The Crocodile Hunter debuted. Yeah. That was a favorite TV show of mine when I was yeah. going. I, I was always watching that show. I, I didn't watch it uh, regularly, yeah. but any time I found an episode on, yeah. I enjoyed watching. He it. was he was taken from us too soon. Though. Yes, he yeah. was. And but his son's continuing his legacy now yes. going forward, which is crazy. Yeah, his oldest looks just like him. I know it's it's, it's it's eerie out there. <laughs> And on this day, you'll you'll get a kick out of this one, I think, Paul. On this day in 2063, Earth's first contact with the extraterrestrial Vulcan species in the Star Trek universe. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's for all the Trekkies out yep. there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> didn't really realize there was a year when Spock I, came I, on the scene. I, I've seen that a few times on these on these days. It's something in the future. Mm-hmm. I like all it's Star Trek related, so. Yeah. We go. Yeah. And we got some days today, of course. It's Gold Star Spouses Day. Mm. National Flash Drive Day. Hey, I like When's the last time you used a flash drive? Uh, just yesterday. Okay. National Caramel Day, or Caramel. I didn't know it can be pronounced either yeah. way. First Contact Day. National Deep Dish Pizza Day. Mm. I love pizza, but I'm not a huge deep dish pizza guy. There's various I'll styles. The Chicago style yeah. deep dish is a little too much. Yeah. Like an old fashioned Noble Rooms deep dish yeah. is pretty good, or Mother Bears from Bloomington. Yeah. So I'll eat it, but it's I prefer more of a New York style. You don't try to get as much Bloomington. No, I noticed that's all right. Wouldn't expect anything else, Todd. So uh, walk to work day, maybe a little chilly for that, but. Yeah, no. No snow yet. No. Hey, don't say that one. I said yet. Uh, National Read a Roadmap Day. When's the last uh, time you've read a roadmap? Uh, it's been several years. Yeah. <laughs> and National Go for Broke Day. Yeah. I do that every day. <laughs> Upcoming events. Yes. Uh, Dreddy's Place in Arlington Public House is holding a Dine and Donate event on Sunday, April 21st. That's going to be from 9 a.m. through 1 p.m. Uh, you can go enjoy some biscuits and gravy, some sausage, and your choice of coffee or water. And this is a free will donation event that will benefit the Youth Outlet Center and Joe's Hope Foundation. Great. I went to that a couple of weeks ago. They had a March one. It was a mm-hmm. good way to spend a Sunday morning and good biscuits and gravy. Yes, I believe this is going to become an annual thing for them every month. So. Great. 
So, uh, money news. We might just skip that today. This is just about yeah. yeah. I did see something this morning, money related and music related, that Kiss sold the their brand, their catalog, and their IP to a uh, uh, European company for a little over $300 million. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we can see. Uh, we can say Gene's name again without having to write a check every time. <laughs> yep. Well, you may have to write your week. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm not worried about that. It'll take longer for them to find us. <laughs> so bank news. Uh, we're open today from 8.30 to 5, and tomorrow 8.30 to noon. And we'll be open Monday. Monday, thank mm-hmm. you. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Eclipse. Oh, yep. uh, that, thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Monday mm-hmm. because of uh, celebrating the Purdue National Championship? <laughs> <laughs> that well, one might have been allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Dick, may have, uh, Dick would never close for something like that. He'd no. just make sure he was home early or yep. watch the game. Yes, he would. And I definitely thought about him on, on <clears> Sunday <throat> for sure. Great. So uh, we have a couple specials going on now. An eight-month CD special at 4.99% annual percentage yield. An 18 month CD at 4.06 annual percentage yield. We still have some loan specials going on. Uh, we can structure a loan to meet really anybody's needs. So if you have an interest in a commercial loan, see Lindy Green or Paulio, or anything to do with mortgage loans, residential real estate, Ben Dalton, Stacey Wilson, we'd be happy to, happy to help you out. Uh, got a lot going on, a lot of positive things going on at the bank. Uh, some new products coming out this year that we'll be talking about more about in the next coming weeks, but uh, we want to get to the highlight of the show, yes. Julie Schambarger, but let me finish the, the, mm-hmm. the regulatory things we need to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're the only locally owned bank in Fulton County. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. I know that means a lot to you, Julie, because you know you said that. <laughs> uh, borrowers must be underwriting guidelines. We are FDIC insured, an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number 399927. And that makes us legal. We welcome Julie Schambarger, Executive Director of the Times Theater. Is that your role title? Yes. You've done a lot there. I mean, you kind of brought it from the ground up. With a cheap popcorn popper, too. <laughs> yeah. That's a talent, too. It is. Uh, you don't want to burn it. You can't uh, no, popcorn. you've set out the fire alarm twice. <laughs> in a row. So, you've developed a passion for the Times Theater and done a lot of work over the years, and why don't you just kind of briefly say, you know, where we've come from and where we're at now. The lighting ceremony was, was what, December of 2022, Yes, right? yes, that December 2022. Somehow um, our order came through and the snow began to fall. Picture perfect day, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe you 10 know. minutes before. Yeah, you arranged that. You had a flat bowl. You know that, right? Exactly. Um, phenomenal event. It captured... Split Road Media did it, and I always praise Trevor there. Right. He captures so many people and emotions without realizing who they are. He has just natural instinct. And that yeah. became an award-winning video. He too. did, on a national level. So if you haven't seen it yet, search for it. Yes, um, it's on it. our website. We have a new website this year. Great. Uh, we've been working on that slowly. Um, that really kicked off the enthusiasm. I mean, Kicked us off to open in February of 2020. The grand opening event. Yep. And you celebrated an anniversary this yes. February, too. Yes, we made 100 years. And then we had some wonderful stats to look back on. Um, 99 pu- public and private events. In this past year? In 10 months. Wow. In the first 10 months. Yeah, we yeah. do a lot of private things, like okay. fast movies and preschools and it really keeps us busy. Senior events and we love it. Keeps the place warmed up and interest. It's a great way to get people to So it's a great words. venue. If you're looking for oh, something yeah. to do for a group, give Julia a call or, yeah. or reach out to them on the Facebook page or That's website. Right. Julia, I know Julia will work with you in whatever it takes. And we are. We'll tailor it. If it's a good fit for your group, we tailor it and make it a really nice experience. So 99 events, and that's just mm-hmm. the first 10 months. Yes. What's the future of that? Mm-hmm. Well, the big leader in those events were live music. We have had such a giant welcome on a regional level. So you will see a big show once a month for sure. For yeah. sure. And they're mainly almost packed houses too, right? Yes, you yes. 300 to 400 people. Mm-hmm. Um, that's awesome. Last month was Echoes of Pompeii, uh, Pink Floyd tribute band. 
um, they kicked in a laser show that was just mind blowing. Well, Julie just showed me some <laughs> pictures of that. It looks like it could have been the real Pink Floyd. Oh, you, know? you didn't know. Yeah. I mean, it was, concerts were my Purdue, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Great. Um, and they're coming back. They'll be here the weekend after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Okay. It's a good way to remember that. Yeah. Um, we have terrific shows coming up right now. Bon Jovi Tribute Band, Blue Sky Dogs, which is Norman Brothers. Um, a week from the day, we have uh, locals, Ike and Dave coming, and Malachi Jaggers, who's kind of, yeah, I think he's Logan Sport Delphi, but he's got a great local following. I know that was part of your original mission, is, you know, do some movies, have some regional accent, but also be a venue for local things, too. Absolutely. That's just still important. Right? Oh, very important. Yeah. Very important. Great. But we all, um, I've always had the belief, let your customers... <clears throat> lead the way, listen, see what they react to. Um, the movies have been great. Uh, the music is just... I think we've had 11 events with over 300 people. That's awesome. Cool. And the movies and then, are a good thing because people can are sponsoring movies and they have their own uh, favorites and you're getting a wide selection of movies and absolutely. you can have some coming up to see them. Yes. Right? Well, this weekend, no movies. I'm we sorry. have a really neat event. Um, we've been... Networking with a Mento girl who has thrift, vintage, and um, almost new prom dresses and formal dresses. So we have transformed the lobby at the Times Theater. It looks like a wardrobe de department okay. just rolled in. So starting tonight, most of the dresses are in the twenty to hundred dollar range. It's gorgeous. There's all ages, all sizes. She's also a seamstress, so you can bring. You know, your daughter, your granddaughter in, prom season's upon us. Yeah, prom season. I watch us yep. proms in April. And exactly. other schools around. Yeah. A really important thing for our community, so we're really excited. So you have lots of different events, different venues. You have a Wizard of Oz movie. Yes. Well, keep your fingers crossed. Okay. Our projector is having its first glitch. Uh -oh. But it is a glitch. It's nothing, like, it's not critical. But we have to send it up a way to get tweaked. Okay. But that's when we have a good vendor. We bought it from an awesome place. We'll get it fixed. It's just a wrinkle. And basically the Times Theater has been built up from almost nothing to, mm -hmm. it takes dollars to support that. Always. So, always. Uh, you're always looking for donations. Yes. And we're you're developing a business plan. Mm -hmm. and, and we are working specifically on an upgrade to our lighting. Those lasers at Pink Floyd were not ours. <laughs> um, we need uh, a couple spotlights, you know, just Standard enhancements. Standard like theater things. Yes. And we need to continually work on our hospitality spaces. That sounds odd, but we do not have a formal backstage. Um, and we need... Yeah, it's the back brick wall of the building. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Um, I tell them we don't have a backstage, but we have a speakeasy, which is I can get them to the Charvel studio theater. But, um, everyone's been wonderful. They love what we've got. Small venues are just the hidden gems of the Midwest right you now. You mentioned the Charvel. You've done some expansion there mm -hmm. trying to make it a uh, more complete venue, basically. Yes. And we, and just to expand our mission, we have the Rotary meets there. We have guitar lessons on Saturday mornings. We have local artists come in and graphic artists for a meet and greet with clients. Remote workers have a private space to join. Um, I know you have some plans for like a, a green room suite available for uh, traveling artists. Basically. Yes, and we transform the Charbel into that. We okay. soundproofed it. We do total blackout curtains. Uh, we cook our just butts off, for lack of a better radio word. <laughs> um, local restaurants help us cater it. They just, we love it. It's still a great volunteer opportunity for our community. Yes. This is all done through volunteer Absolutely. work. So Absolutely. Taking tickets, selling popcorn, Absolutely. sweeping up. I mean, everything's needed. So if somebody wants to volunteer, how do they do that? Uh, message me on Facebook, or message us on Facebook. I'm the one that, who gets the messages. We need, even if it's uh, the first hour of an event, any event, we need five people. 
<clears throat> as soon as we get everyone in and going, you can go home if you want to, which that fits some people's schedules. Um, we need popcorn poppers, ticket takers, people to count, clean up, um, all sorts of stuff. Usher type, making sure people yes. can use the seats. Yes, I've got so good we... flashlights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got, you know, just make sure everything's good on our live music events. I call it soft security, just kind of guiding people the doors that they can and can go out and getting in and out easily. So what's one of the major, like, biggest benefits that you saw from the time seeder this year that you didn't expect? It's kind of a tough question. Well, there's something I hope for, and we see it about every time. Um, it brings people together. People, um, we don't have a lot in common anymore. It, we might like sport, you guys yeah. sports, but outside of that, it's pretty cool to see people from all walks of life come and have a wonderful time and experience in the memory. And that, I love seeing Main Street full. That you don't see often at all. Yeah, I love I seeing some, the restaurants full. Yeah, some of the bigger music events, the restaurants have been too. Oh, yes, they yeah. just, um, most of them. Just submitted impact statements. It's a beautiful thing to read. And, and just all the cards. I think that's a flashback to what we were and part of the reason why we all joined. Yeah, there's you know? some nostalgia there, seeing like, you know, I know I've heard some people say, well, I used to go see movies there. So oh, I'm morning. every Friday yeah. night and then Saturday morning, the bank, you know, the squirrel, squirrel club. Yeah. We have a picture of it in the lobby. 80% of them are classmates of mine. Awesome. With them that, you know, it was a very important part of so, growing up. I know for many years this was a dream, and the dream's kind of come true the last two years. So what's next? How does the dream keep growing? Well, we have the space um, to the south, which we have so many ideas from recording studios to art gallery to an event space, maker space, you know. We know magicians and all sorts of amazing people that could come through. What a birthday party idea or anything yeah. like that. Um, like to the outdoor, indoor, you're kind of yes. deciding what that could look yeah. like. And yeah. to the north will be a, a, we're working on an amazing outdoor space as we speak. Mm -hmm. That, if all goes as planned, you'll see that this year. So outdoor movies, outdoor music. So everybody trucks. think of where we come from. The Time Seeder sign up there. Oh, and yeah. Kind of rusty and almost looked like it was falling apart to what we have today. Just think about that in the next few years, what it can be. And thank you for your leadership and that. You're doing a great job and helping our community out. And you do have that support every day. A lot of this has been on your own time and on mm -hmm. your own dollars, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the first two years, all for myself, um, total volunteer, and that was a 40 hour a week job. Um, I did add up some volunteer hours that were contributed in 2023 from the whole team and it surpassed 3,500. That's awesome. And the artists, let's not forget Jim and Angie. Right. I mean, Jim's, the Pink Floyd show, everyone's stunned, Jim including, he's there Monday morning. Let's get going on another mural. And he's in there right now, paying tribute to our um, circus history. So, right. it just, they're wonderful. Well, thank you for all you do for the community. You're doing a great job, and keep up the great work. And well, yeah. I can't believe this one has not been there yet, but if you haven't, you need to get there. And Just walk by and walk We hear it in. every week, and all that is is opportunity to us. We look forward to welcoming people. It's just, we got something really special here. So we, we look, do. We thank love you it. for your servant heart mm -hmm. and your passion for this, because without you, it probably wouldn't be where we're at today. And keep up the great work. It's perfect timing. We'll figure it out. So Thank check you. out the Times Theater <laughs> Facebook page and the website. Absolutely. More to come on the website. Yes, it looks great. Thank you. We have to stay around for trivia. Oh, well, right? God, I forgot. <laughs> I so, which school has the most all time Final Four appearances? UCLA, Duke, Kentucky, or North Carolina? You want to go first or you want me to? Mm, you can. All right. Um, probably wrong, but I'm going to follow my gut and go with what I saw everybody wear in school. And that's North Carolina. And I will say Duke. Because I was either way. 
North Carolina with 21 appearances. The first in 46, the last in 2022. All right. Good job, Paul. I'll take it. Thank it. I wouldn't have gotten it if, you know, I didn't have, like, half my class were in North Carolina. So. <laughs> Carolina Blue. Yep, yep. So we're going to close with words of wisdom. Okay. Uh, pretty famous Hoosier at one point in time. Played some high school basketball in Martinsville. Went on to Purdue. John Wooden went on to UCLA. Success is never final. Failure is never fatal. It's courage that counts. I like those words of wisdom. Thank you, Todd, for um, coming in and hosting the show today. Thank you, Julie, for everything that you've done with the Times Theater. And thank you for coming in and uh, talking about it. And we look forward to uh, talking with you guys again next week. Thank you, Paul. Have a great weekend. You too.